you brought your Bible this morning. I want you to stand and I want you to get your Bible. And let's dive into the word of the Lord this morning. I know I won't get through all of it. This is actually really only going to be part two of three parts. And we'll finish part three on the first Sunday of February. But I want you this morning to join me in Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 2. It will be our launching pad for today, for parts 2 and parts 3. We'll scratch the surface a bit this morning and then we will dissect it and expose the truths of it in our part 3. Habakkuk chapter 2. Look at somebody tell them that's Old Testament. Habakkuk chapter number 2. For the conservation of time this morning, we're going to look at verse 1 verse 2 and verse 3. Amen. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 verse 2 and verse 3. If you haven't acknowledged by saying amen, amen. if you still need a few minutes say wait. Habakkuk chapter 2 verses 1 verse 2 and verse 3. Reading from a King James Version Bible I want you to join me reading in concert together aloud. One two ready read. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me (laughs) and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision, make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. Verse three, for the vision, but at the end, Yes, Lord, and not lie, though it tarry, wait for it, because it, yeah, yeah, I'll stand up on my watch, I'll set, or, and set me, rather, up on the tower, and will watch to see what you will say unto me, and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered him and said, write the vision, make it plain upon tables that he that may run may read it. it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie, though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not Terry. Then the Lord said unto me in verse number two, write my answer plainly on tablets so that a runner can carry the correct message to others. This vision is for a future time. It describes the end and it will be fulfilled. If it seems slow in coming, wait patiently for it will surely take place. It will not be Delayed. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Again, we want to tag this moment as part two of our 2018, this being our season of elevation. Look at somebody and tell them it's our season of elevation. Come on, look at somebody like you're still excited about the new season that you've entered in and look at them with some confidence and with some appreciation that you've been allowed access into this next era of your life and look them with boldness and tell them, I've just entered into my season of elevation. If you're glad about it, clap your hands and bless God all over the building this morning. How thankful we are to the Lord to be able to greet all of you this morning, those of you that are here in the Chicago campus, as well as those of you that are watching this morning, excited to be able to have the opportunity to share with you the word of truth, the word of the Lord that he wants to share concerning where we are and where we are going. But before we dive into our message, how excited I am this morning to be able to proclaim the goodness of our God, be able to proclaim the word of the Lord and look out in the congregation and see my dear mom sitting in the congregation this morning. Mother Brackett is at church this morning, and we're grateful to the Lord for his promises and that healing is her portion in Jesus' name. Grateful to all of you who have continued to pray, to reach out, and to text, and to inbox. And uh, here's manifestation of the fervent, effectual prayers of the righteous availeth much. And it's no secret what he has done for one, he's willing to do for others. Amen. 
and we bless God for it. So this morning, as we drop anchor in our second la layer of a three-layer cake this morning, I want to again remind you, beloved, that as we talk about this season that we've entered into, as we talk about 2018, I again need to press upon you this morning that you truly hear God in this and that you allow your spirit man to receive what God is saying concerning this season that we have entered in. As I open up part two of my message this morning, it's not a preachy message, but it's a vision message. Message. It's a declaration. It is a directive. It is a prophetic declaration of what it is that God is speaking concerning his people for this place, for this season, and moving forward. Again, I need to remind you that as we have entered into 2018, and can you believe it? We're really in the last few days of January already. We've entered into 2018, but the first month of the year is coming to a close. It's moving rapidly with or without your permission. And at the end of the day, it's so important that you understand that we have entered into a brand new year. But entering into this brand new year, the worst thing for you to do is to access it as if it's just the typical thing. It's just another new year. It's just another new January. But this is not like all the other years. This is not like all of the other places and times that I've come into a new era as it relates to times, clocks, and calendars. But this time... 2018, January of our Lord's year. This season uh, represents a new era. This season represents a new time in the life of Rhema Word Church and everything and everybody that's connected to Rhema Word Church. What we have entered in, beloved, I want you to understand that we are blessed to enter 2018. I'm thankful to the Lord. I couldn't wait for it to get here. But you've got to understand, it's not just another year. It's not just another month. It's not just another time. But it's a whole new season. It is our next season. It is our newest season. It is our winning season. And I want to announce yet again, it is our season of elevation. Somebody shout, it's our season of elevation. Let me rush to remind you this morning that this next phase for us is major. This next phase in the life of our church, in the life of our assignment, is a time where if you're willing to be fully sold out to God, submitted to God, and remain connected to him and to his body, he told me to remind you as he reminded you on the first week of the year that you will experience explosive advancements, extraordinary enhancements, unexplainable promotions, preferential treatment, and status upgrades. Understand, people of God, he's saying to you that this won't be like all the other years. This won't be like all the other seasons, and I cannot take it lightly, but I like I have to come in knowing what I'm coming into. I've got to come in knowing that it's not like all of the other cycles. It's not like all of the other rounds. But this round, I'm really going higher. Somebody shout, I'm really going higher. Before I can get into part two, I've got to remind you what he said to you. When he said that, Rhema, we have been upgraded. And it's important that you understand we will not do. Not only did he say we cannot, but I've resolved we will not do what we have always done. And we won't be who we've always been. At the end of the day, 2018, we're going to level up. I need about eight people that's with me. High five somebody and tell them, level up. When we talk about level up, let me remind you that level up suggests that we are taking time and intentionally this year moving forth and going in our life, in our relationship with Jesus, in our career, in our academic pursuit. We are making major moves and the moves that we are making are for the better. Okay, okay, here it is. Uh, 2018, when we talk about level up, 2018 says you got to refuse to digress or regress, but progress through the process that ensures you possess what you have confessed. Have five somebody because they still looking strange and tell them level up, boo, level up, level up. 
level up suggests that you refuse to digress, refuse to regress, but progress. I'm not going to go backwards, I'm going forward. I'm not going to go making lateral moves, but every move I make this year is going to be forward progress. I'm going to progress through the process so that I can possess what I have confessed. Because we've been confessing and declaring, but the problem is we haven't been moving. And this year, we've got to move towards what we've confessed. We've got to move in agreement to what we have declared. And I declare unto you, if you perform in the process based upon what God has spoken concerning you, you shall have what you pursue. Somebody shout, I shall have it. I shall have it. This season is different. This season, this winning season, this season of elevation it's going to produce God's plans for your life it's going to produce God's fruit in your life but most of all it's going to produce God's promises concerning your life I want to again remind you prophetically that things are going to get better than they've been before but you got to be willing to do what you got to do in order for things to get better so that means you can't just be sitting around all of 2018 talking about I'm waiting on God to perform I'm waiting on God to do this it is not just about God's performance in your life but it's also about your performance based upon how you're going to respond to what you believe God's already done. See when you believe God's already done a thing then there ought to be corresponding actions that match what you believe. See God is looking at what you do because what you do lines up with what's really in your heart. I don't care what you say with your mouth your actions are always lining up with what you really believe in your your heart. I'm preaching Lord and they won't say nothing. So that means that this year it's your year of performance. Look at somebody and tell them it's my year of performance. It's my year of action. It's my year of movement. And so you've got to be able to move in the direction that brings you closer to the promises of God being performed in your life. He says this year, you got to rise to the occasion. No more excuses. No more feeling sorry for yourself. No more looking for nobody else to feel sorry for you. No more talking about what happened to you. We're not trying to downplay what happened, but you got to look at it. It had to happen. Some of the stuff that happened in your life as bad as it was, as deep as it hurts you, understand you can take what has happened and cause something else to happen. You can take a bad place in your life and from that bad place make it a bad, ain't nobody saying that. Your bad place can become your better place. Your bitter place can become your blessed place. It's all a matter of what you're going to do about it. Oh, I know it's Ebonic, but high five a neighbor and ask them, what you going to do about it? What, what you going to do about it? At the end of the day, you have cried all last year. You complained the year before that. You whined the year before that. How about this year making it your year of execution, making it your year of action, and making it your year where your actions respond to the level of your belief as it relates to God's plan for your life. Can I prophetically release over you what God said to me last night as I was reviewing my notes. He said, tell the people, this is a big year for us. I know I'm not talking to everybody, but the folk I'm talking about, your baby just leaped. So I want to make a jump again. I said by the power of the Holy Spirit that 2018 is not just another year, but this is a big year for us. If you receive that by faith, you need to get out of your seat on that one and go to three people and tell them this is a big year for me. This is a big year for me. I need y'all in place this morning. I'm prophesying and you're not saying nothing, not doing nothing. And I just said your corresponding action. This is going to be a big year for me. I'm going to do some big things. I'm taking some big steps. Thank you, Pastor Spencer. I'm taking some leaps and some bounds that oftentimes, I, I'm going to be transparent. Sometimes I was too scared to do it. I know I'm not in here by myself, but I know I'm the only one that's going to tell the truth. Because sometimes what God is telling you can be overwhelming to your natural eye, to your natural man. But I'm telling you this is the year that you embrace it with your spirit and know it's the time for big stuff to happen in your life. Clap your hands and bless him if you believe it's a big year for you. 
Uh, before we get too preachy, let's just go through the declaration this morning and declare to you as we will raise this Habakkuk chapter number two. Habakkuk is only three chapters long. It's numbered among the minor prophets between Nahum and Zephaniah. It might be a minor prophet in its scope, but it's major in its implications to us. It might be minor in its categoriz categorization, but at the end of the day, you've got to understand it's a major word if this is going to be a major season. And so, sisters and brothers, it is Habakkuk who is a contemporary of the prophet Jeremiah. He has the responsibility of ministering to the southern kingdom of Judah. Both of these prophets, Jeremiah and Habakkuk, were in Jerusalem when the Babylonians came, attacked, destroyed the city, and now God's chosen people are captive. And now in chapter 2, chapter 2 is really a pickup of chapter 1 because uh, Habakkuk has gone to God, the prophet has gone to God, and did what church people of this day don't do. He he prayed. See how quiet they get? You were jumping, leaping, hollering, kicking, and scratching. When I talk about this, it, a big year. But I keep telling you, whatever's going to happen for you in 2018, it has to be bathed in prayer. Not only must it be bathed in prayer, but it must be birthed in prayer. And the last thing that most people want to do is pray. You got to pray even when you don't understand what's happening. As a matter of fact, that's the safest thing for you to do when you cannot comprehend and cannot understand. Habakkuk couldn't understand what in the world is going on. Why are you going to allow us, your chosen people, not just to be captive, but we're going to be captive by these old wicked, crazy folk. These people who don't love you, who don't know you, who don't honor you. And here we are, your chosen people. I just don't understand why the wicked prospers. And let me tell you something, as big as this year is, is, as big as the steps that you will take there will be points periods stages and places where you don't understand how he's moving you just gotta know he's still moving Lord, I feel my preach coming up. High five somebody and tell them, I may not understand it, but I do know that he's still moving and he's moving in my favor. It might not feel good at the moment. It might be painful at the time, but when it all works out, I understand all things are working for my good. Look at somebody and tell them it's working for my good. No, you didn't say that like you should. Look at somebody and tell them it's all working for my good. God has a plan for your life. God has a mission for your life. God has a vision for your life. But you've got to be able to have all the ingredients and not just the ones you like. Come on, if it was left up to many of us, half of the things that we've gone through in life, we would have never gone through. And that's why he didn't tell you before you got in it. That's why he didn't show you before he put you on the ride and locked the seatbelt. Because had you known before, you would have never had enough faith. You would have never had enough belief to get on and take the ride. But I'm here today to tell you that no matter where you are, no matter what has happened, his promises to you are yea and amen. And what he has promised he shall bring to pass God is saying that I want to share my plans with you I want to see them come to pass in your life but you got to understand what I'm showing you is not just your past it's not just your presence but I'm showing you your future I'm showing you what will happen and I want you to understand that sometimes to get to the end of a thing you might have to go through a rocky thing to get to the place that God has promised for you this morning, he wants me to encourage you. You got to see the broader picture. Can I get you to help somebody on your road and tell them quit looking at the little stuff and see the bigger picture? Quit looking at all the bumps and then size in your life based upon the one bump. At the end of the day, you got nine more bumps in this chapter. So before you write the chapter, finish the bumps. Because it's the ten bumps that's going to make the fulfillment of the chapter. God says, I want you to see the larger scope of your life. Stop allowing the devil to cause you to see the negativity of the moment. And see the promises of God concerning your whole life. But the ability to see God working from the end to the beginning. From the middle to the end. From the beginning to the middle. Has everything to do with how you choose to look at the situation. Vision is being able to take a step back from your situation and get a larger perspective. Vision says this year, I got to see more than just myself. <laughs> see, see, we live in the bubble. 
Well, we just want God's will to come to pass in our life for us. But even though it's God's plan for you, it's really not just about Okay, where's the honest section in this church? And I'll preach to you and we all can get on home. Honest people, raise your hand. Listen, let, let me tell you something. There are many people that are connected to you that the only reason that you've got to go the route you got to go is that God's trying to talk to them more than he is trying to talk to you. But while he's trying to talk to them through you, he's perfecting that that concerns you. Listen, he ain't just letting you go through for the fun of it. He's trying to bless somebody connected to you, deliver somebody connected to you, but also perfect that which concerns you while your life blesses somebody else. So look at somebody and tell them, I got to see the bigger picture. I got to see. I got to see my life bigger than just about me. I got to see even my pain bigger than just about me. You won't even be able to relate to the people that God's going to send you to unless you go this way. Y'all notice where the amen die and where they rise? Because everybody wants the blessings of the Lord that make us rich and added no sorrow. But nobody want to go through what it takes to be blessed like that. Okay, uh, see, see, you don't like being uncomfortable. You don't like, you like to be liked by everybody. You want to be accepted by everybody. And blessed folks are not liked by everybody. Blessed folks get lied upon. They get lied to. Blessed folks get hurt. But at the end, you understand that even though all of that had to happen, I still understand I'm on my way to my blessed place. And I'm being taken to my blessed place so that through my life, my life blesses others. Look at somebody and tell them it's got to be bigger than just you, boo. It's got to be bigger. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me up in this quiet church this morning. Will you high five somebody like you got an attitude this morning and tell them quit being selfish. It's not just about you. Somebody, I don't know why this happening to me. I just don't understand why every time I turn around, I got to go through this. But you got to understand, if you can stand to go through it, understand God's going to bless your life for the benefit of somebody else's life. And I keep trying to explain to people, God is never going to bless people through you and not bless you as a byproduct. As long as I'm willing to submit to the process of being a conduit by which God can bless you. Because it's going to pass through me. It's going to bless me first. <laughs> so I never have to live life for my own purpose. I live life for his. And when I live life for his purpose, I'm always blessed. Uh, high five somebody and tell them I'm always blessed. Vision is being able to see the morning. Even though it's dark at night. Vision is being able to see that weeping only endures momentarily. But you understand what's happening in the morning. And because what you know is coming in the morning, you now are able to go to bed at night. Because you know where you are, you are not there forever. You're only, ain't, ain't nobody going to say nothing. But eight of y'all need to high five somebody and tell them, I'm just passing through here. I'm just, I'm just passing through. I'm, I'm just on my way through this thing because I'm on my way to that thing. Vision is saying that at the end, I understand that it's not by my might, not by my power, but by his spirit. Proverbs 29, 18 says that where there's no vision, people perish. I love the message translation that says that people can't see what God is doing. They stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what he reveals, they are most blessed. Man, that blessed my socks off. I almost said it again. When I can see what God is doing. And this sea is not talking about manifestation sea. This seeing is talking about seeing in the spirit. This is talking about seeing it before you see it. This is talking about seeing it before the prognosis change and seeing it before the check come and seeing it before the call comes in to say you got the job. He says you got to see what God is doing so you won't stumble over yourself. You tripping over yourself because you're not looking to perceive what God is doing. When you see what God is doing and you attend to. Okay, okay. He, he makes revelation. But if you ignore what he reveals, you're still going to be tripping. Because the text says that I just read that you see what he's doing and then attend to what he has revealed. 
Okay, okay. I said it like this before in the past. Quit telling God to order your steps and you be unwilling to move your feet. All of my steps in your word, dear Lord. And he tells you to go this way and you ask him why. He says, when I reveal it, attend to it. And it is when then, then and only then, when you attend to what I reveal, that you are not just blessed, BB. He says, but you are most blessed. And I don't know about anybody else. I don't just want to be blessed. But I want to be so blessed where I can bless other nations. I can bless other ministries. I can bless other, ain't nobody that big like that. But I'm talking about making them kind of big steps and taking that kind of direction in my life where God does such a big work. I'm able to do big things. Look at somebody one more time and remind them, this is a major year for me. Come on, you already lost your confidence and I'm not at the end. I said, look at somebody and remind them, this is a major year for me. But in order for it to be major, Raymond, we've got to understand there is a need to have God's vision. We can no longer be a church that just performs and a church that just exists. God has given us a vision. God has given us a mission. And you've got to understand it's time for us to collaborate with God. 1 Corinthians 3 and 9 says, for we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry and ye are God's building. God is saying, I don't need you to create the plan. I just need you to work what I created. See, you're spending time and energy and resources trying to come up with something that's already been created. He says, remind the people that they're collaborating with me, not creating for me. See, you're not here to replace God. You're here to obey God. Ain't nobody saying that, so I'll just stick to my notes. He said, remind them, I'm the writer, I'm the director, I'm the producer, I'm the choreographer, I'm the lead singer. Y'all just my backup. That didn't sit well with nobody in the middle section. So high five somebody and tell them, you're only a backup. Come on, high five them because they ain't getting it. High five them and tell them when it comes down to God, we're only backups. See, we have to often remind ourselves, God don't have to have us. God's never desperate. He really doesn't even need us. But we've got to see it right. We need him. And I don't know about anybody else, but I'm sure enough in that category. I need God. Oh, Lord, I remember the song that says, I need thee every hour. I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come. To thee. Rama, you got to understand that this is God's plan concerning why he started a church well over 54 years ago. He didn't start a church because of anybody's personality, but he started this church because of his plan for this region. And we have to be about our father's business. No longer being concerned about just what we want to do, but it's time for us to catch and run. High five a neighbor before they turn me all the way off and tell them it's time to catch and run. Concerning the vision of God, Rhema, there must be recommitment and reinvestment in the core values of why we exist. We have a mandate from God. And as much as I love shouting, as much as I love dancing, as much as I love preaching alone, those things are not the only thing. And oftentimes you got to understand they are not the most important things that we need to be about we need to be about the vision that God has given to us as it relates to why we exist why he placed us in the world for such a time as this so please indulge me for a few moments as I reintroduce you to the core vision the core reason why we exist number one we exist to expand I ain't going to get no shout here, but I'm going to preach it like it's a sermon. High five somebody and tell them it's time for you to expand. We've got to expand the kingdom of God. We've got to expand the influence of God. We've got to expand the reach of God. Not just expanding that influence, not just expanding that reach in his house, but it's time for us to take it to the streets. It's time for us to expand the kingdom of God in Austin, in Chicago, in Illinois, in this Midwest region. Because you've got to understand, we have a mandate from God. 
I'm not talking about the mandate from your bishop. I'm not talking about the mandate from your mama. I'm not talking about the mandate from your spouse. I'm talking about we got a mandate from God. When Jesus rose from the grave and got ready to leave his disciples and give them what they were to do when he returned to the right hand of the Father, he told them their authoritative command was to go. Not just go, but teach. Not just teach, but baptize. And not just baptize, but teach some more. He says at the end of the day, I want you to go into the dark places and expand my reach. I want you to go into the deep places and expand my love. But in order for us to do that, we've got to leave this. He says, our marching orders today are the same as they were when he left his disciples. He says he wants this world to say what that world said of his disciples in Acts chapter 17, verse 6. The message that the disciples preached, the work that the disciples performed, the miracles that the people witnessed to in that hour left the critics around them saying that these disciples are turning the world upside down. Will you high five a neighbor because they won't get excited about this. So high five them and tell them it's time to turn up. It's time to turn up. And I'm not talking about in the club. I'm not talking about on the street as it relates to how you've been turning up. But it's time for us to turn the world upside down for the kingdom of Christ. At the end of the day, that was their mandate. But you cannot, we, we cannot be disconnected from their mandate with this dialogue of thinking. That was then. This is now. The mandate then is still the mandate now. We've got to expand the footprint. Ain't nobody going to say nothing. With all the unsaved people in this neighborhood, it's time for us to go soul searching and soul winning. We should not be satisfied with just me and Jesus alone. At the end, I want somebody else to experience his love. I want somebody else to experience his forgiveness. I want somebody else to experience his compassion. I want somebody else to experience his power. But the problem is not the harvest. Yeah, the problem is, I'm trying not to preach it, but it keep coming up. We don't have harvest issues. We've got labor trouble. Look at your neighbor and tell them we got trouble with workers. You might be sitting by one, so go and high five them again and tell them that's right. We got trouble with workers. The harvest, according to Matthew 9, 35, the harvest truly is plenteous. But the laborers are few. Mandate for us this year, Rhema, it's time to go fishing. <laughs> the Bible says in Proverbs, he that winneth souls is wise. This is our year to be wise. At the end of the day, and we start in our Jerusalem. What's our Jerusalem? It starts in our house. First of all, we want to believe God for household salvation. I want my spouse saved. I want my children saved. I want my grandchildren saved. I want my sisters and my brothers saved. And then from my house to the house next to mine. I want everybody on my blocks. Ain't nobody saying nothing. Ain't nobody shouting about this. But have I have a neighbor and tell him it's time to go fishing, boo. Ah, they ain't even got a pole. Look at them, high five them, and tell them, neighbor, it's time for you to get your net, get your pole, get your bait. It's time to go fishing. It's time to put on some boots and get in the water, and not just in the shallow water, but it's time to launch out in the deep. We've cast our net on one side for the last 22 years, but he says this new season, we got to cast on the other side. I need about eight of y'all to go to somebody and tell them we getting ready for a draw. Y'all ain't saying nothing because when he told them to cast their neck to the other side, he said the reason why you got to cast to the other side is because you're getting ready for a draw. Okay. So most everything else comes under this expansion. Understand we don't gather just because we are saved. It's not just a pet rally. It's not just this exclusive spiritual social club where only the spiritually deep people get to attend and get to be able to have the benefits. No, 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 no. You got to understand we gather for edification. And now that we get pumped up, now that we get re-engaged and reconnected, we enter for worship. 
we exit for service. So this week, I want you to be fishing. This week, I want you to be casting your net. This week, I want you to be opening up your mouth. And this week, I want you to collaborate with God. Come on, three, four, y'all, high five somebody and tell them this week, I'm collaborating with God. Oh, this church up in here. Come on, high five somebody and tell them this is your week to collaborate. This is our week that the word of God must go forth. This is our week that we've got to be more concerned about the work of the church. And not just being concerned about church work. Because Jesus says in the word of God, I believe it's Matthew chapter 9, that he's not here to just do his own biddings. But he said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. For the night is coming and no man can work. And he wasn't talking about attending church. He wasn't talking about attending Bible class. He wasn't talking about attending bread for life. But he was talking about what we do in the world. I have somebody and tell them this is your work week. Y'all won't even help me. I'm trying. High five a neighbor and tell them, neighbor, this is your week to work. We are here on behalf of the King of Glory and we've got to carry out his mission. What is his mission? He says, I would that all men would be saved. His desire is to reach them from the uttermost, to reach them that are in the gutter, to reach them that are the downtrodden, to reach them that are the castaway. And if it's going to happen, it's got to be by his church. So grab a neighbor one more time and look that neighbor in the eye and tell him, neighbor, it's your work week. Look at somebody else and tell them, neighbor, it's your week to fish. It's your week to drop your net. It's your week to get your bait together. Launch out in the deep because fish are awaiting. Souls are awaiting. Lives are awaiting. He said, expand, stretch out your borders. We are about to blow up, but not in money alone, not in influence alone, but we are about to blow up in soul winnings. Souls are coming from the east. Souls are coming from the west. Souls are coming from the north and the south. 20,000 believers have been added to Rhema Word Church, both men and women. And each member is committed to the work of the Lord. I prophesy every seat in this house is filled with people that love God. Why? Because we spend our time not lollygagging, not gossiping, but we fishing. Not talking about people, not talking about other groups. I ain't got time to talk. I gotta look for fish. I find a neighbor and tell a neighbor I don't have time to complain. I'm too busy fishing. I don't have time to grumble. I'm too busy fishing. Neighbor, I don't need trash in my ear. I'm too busy fishing. I'm too busy doing the works of him that sent me. I'm here on divine assignment. Grab a neighbor and tell a neighbor it's time to collaborate with God. And he said, this season is about souls. Somebody shout souls are coming to the kingdom. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Somebody shout because the atmosphere has ears. The angels are waiting to perform. Somebody shout souls are coming. I hear them. I 
see them. I hear them. And they don't want you. They don't want me. They just want Jesus. They just want to be changed. They just want to be loved. They just want to be embraced. So he says, expand to reach souls. Expand to draw in the lost. Somebody is waiting on you. Somebody needs to meet Jesus. And the only way they going to meet Jesus, they got to meet you. Grab a neighbor. I got to close it here. But grab that neighbor. Tell that neighbor, somebody, somebody is waiting on you. Come on, say it with some urgency. Neighbor, somebody, 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 somebody's looking for you. Neighbor, you can't procrastinate. Neighbor, you can't sit on the sidelines. Somebody is looking for you. There's a lost sheep. There's a lost soul over here, over there, and everywhere. Anybody go help me find that this is lost? Say yes. Say yes. I'm done. Listen. I need you to hear me. I need you to hear me clearly. Because he's saying it again. He says, this week go fishing. I need about 20 of y'all, maybe even 25, to get out of your seat and declare to somebody, this week I'm fishing. Go. This week I'm fishing. This week I'm, I'm fishing. I'm discerning. I'm, I'm looking. I'm perceiving. We, we got to expand our reach. We got to build capacity. There's new blood that got to come in here. <laughs> oh, God. So I hear God telling the people of God, make room. Because they coming. Make room. Men, women, boys and girls. I'm telling you what I see. They are coming. Yeah, high five somebody and tell them they coming, they coming, they coming, they coming. Can't you see it? Can't you hear it? Can't you sense it? Even for where we are headed, even for where we are going, we talk about level up, going up. We talk about expansion. Not only are we responsible for those that are connected to us, but we're responsible to those who are waiting for us. There's a level of service. There's a level of work that's got to happen for those who are we going to. See, at the level we're going, there are people that are already there. Just because it takes you nine years to get to the promise don't mean nobody else is already there. Lord, it took the children of Israel 40 years, baby, to get to their promise. And when they got there, the land was occupied. You talking about the devil got myself. Let me tell you something. God's been using the devil to nurture it till you got there. Once you get there, he gives you the authority. That's what he said, not by your might, not by your strength, but by his spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And that's how you're going to be able to possess. So you got to understand there are people that are waiting for you. That's why we got to walk in humility. You, this is the worst time in your life to be arrogant. The worst thing you can do in this season of your life is take that prideful, arrogant spirit into this season of elevation. You won't be able to minister to the type of people that you got to minister to. You won't be able to be a blessing to those that God is affording you the opportunity to be a blessing to. Oh God, I keep hearing him telling, tell the people it's time to go fishing. It's time to go. You can't draw them to a Jesus you don't know. You can't draw them to a Jesus that you're not living like. 
Because see, they see the real you. So for some of y'all, before you go fishing, start fishing in, in your own self first. You get back on the right path before you try to help anybody. Okay, I don't know who it is, so I got to just tell it to everybody. Look at your neighbor and tell them, did you hear him? You get on the right path first. Check yourself. Correct yourself. And then get your pole out. Okay. He said that you can't be picky with your pole. You fish where I tell you. You catch what I put before you. Because they're not yours, they're mine. Okay. As much as I love Mildred and Martin Brackett, I had nothing to do with them being my parents. Wouldn't trade them for nothing in the world. But I had nothing to do. It was God's plan. Because he knew the kind of hand I was going to need the kind of structure and discipline I will need. So he connected me with a type of parents that will ensure I get what I need. He's saying to you, you don't get to pick where you're going to fish. You, you fish where I tell you, and you catch what I put before you. Because at the end, it has everything to do with who I am in you and what I will do through you. I guess I'm going to try to do something a little later, but... uh. This morning, I don't know who you are, but you better hear them. There's going to be a, a, a tremendous opportunity for fishing this week. God is going to open doors for fishing. Now, of course, we want them in Rhema. Absolutely. Rhema Word is the first church I suggest to people. But if they don't want to be in Rhema, as long as they want to be saved, hey, listen, I just want, to, I just want you to be a part of the kingdom of God. Because I know everybody's not assigned to Rainbow. I only want those who are assigned here. But I do understand I have a responsibility to lost souls. That they be one to Jesus Christ. Everybody lift your hands. And take a moment to just repent. For what we've been insensitive. To ministering to the people who needed us the most. Ask God to forgive you for where you've been insensitive and move past opportunities to be able to express who he is and what he is through who you are and what you are. Come on, lift your hands and ask him to forgive you. That I, I've allowed myself to forget what really mattered been so busy pursuing career, been so busy pursuing my academic achievement and my title and my spot in church, I have forgotten that you have saved me so that through my life others could be saved. Forgive me, God. And I want to recommit to fishing for you. I want to recommit to working for you. I want to recommit to that which brings us into the first of our four core vision values. This is our year of expansion. Forgive us, Father. Forgive us. We'll win souls into the kingdom. We'll have a concern about what bothers you the most. If you are in pursuit of lost men and women, we'll pursue lost men and women because we're here on your behalf. We give you glory. We give you praise. In Jesus' name.